Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. MRI or CT scan of my foot, which is better for a runner? But yesterday I was talking to a runner who had an ankle sprain that didn't improve. Now, after about a year of not being able to run, having pain when walking and becoming really frustrated with not being able to run, he called me for a second opinion. Now, during that discussion, he asked me whether or not it would be better to get an MRI or a CT scan to evaluate the bone, the joint, the surrounding soft tissue, and determine what was really going on and preventing him from getting back to running. This is an unfortunate but common scenario with injured runners and overtraining injury. The story typically goes like this. A runner is deep in the build phase of training. Something gets off with the training schedule and you extend your workout or you stack a couple of workouts together to try to make up for the lost workout on the schedule. The next day you wake up and realize you have an overtraining injury. Something hurts, but you're not foolish. So you take some time off. You stop running for a few days. You feel a little bit better. So you go out for a run. But it gets worse. Fear of not making it to your event starts pouring in. You you know, you call to schedule an appointment with your doctor. You find out you're going to have to wait for a few days or a week. Then you go see the doctor. The doctor says, it's an overtraining injury. You've been running too much. And the doctor tells you to stop running. You're instructed to ice it, wear a brace, try some shoe inserts, most of which you probably already tried. And nothing seems to be helping, so the doctor gives you a prescription for physical therapy. So then you have to take some time off of work in the middle of the day to go to physical therapy, and you do that for a few weeks, but it still doesn't get better. A month or so later, you go back to the doctor and you explain you basically had no improvement, and you still can't run without this aching sensation in your foot. The doctor gets some x-rays of your foot and ankle, but sees nothing. She basically says they totally look normal. So you start thinking, well, maybe I need an MRI or CT scan. You start reading on running forums about how injured runners kind of limp along with an aching injury for months until they finally got an MRI or a CT scan. And then the question comes to mind for you, which one is better? I think it may be helpful to understand a little bit about MRI and CT scans so you can best make a decision about which study may give you the information you really need so you can just get back to running. So let's talk about MRI versus CT imaging and how they actually work. Both MRI and CT scans use computers to produce the images, but the imaging process is very different. How does an MRI make images of running injuries? MRI basically makes an image of your body using a big magnet. You get a range of black and white pictures based on the amount of water content in the tissues. Here's an example of what I mean. Bone marrow is on the inside of your bones, and bone marrow is mostly fat, which of course is mostly oil. There's normally very little water inside the bones, and when you get a stress fracture in a bone, it becomes inflamed and irritated. The inflammatory fluid that collects inside the bone when it becomes injured, of course, is mostly water, like your blood is mostly water. And that water inside the bone lights up bright white on the MRI. So when you have a stress fracture in your second metatarsal bone, you see a bunch of bright white color on the inside of that one second metatarsal bone. When you look at all the other metatarsal bones in your foot, you know, the fourth and the third and the first and the fifth metatarsals, the ones that aren't injured, well, those metatarsal bones are dark. They're normal. So the non-injured metatarsal bones have none of that bright white signal that you see in the injured second metatarsal bone. And that difference in the amount of white versus black on those images on your MRI shows us how much inflammation is in the tissues. And of course, when you have an overtraining injury such as a stress fracture in the foot or you have tendonitis or a sprained ankle ligament or something like that, your body tries to heal it. That healing begins with a process of inflammation. The MRI gives you an excellent picture of the inflammation at work wherever the tissue is injured. How does a CT scan make images of running injuries? Well, a CT scan uses a computer and takes a series of x-ray images and then creates a set of tissue images that's very detailed that appears very similar to the images produced from an MRI. The primary difference between these two imaging modalities is that CT scans use x-rays and hence radiation to obtain the imaging. Now, the speed at which x-ray particles move through bone is very different than the speed at which x-ray particles move through soft tissue like skin and tendons and ligaments and muscles. For that reason, 
CT scans are the best imaging modality to look at injuries in bone. Many years ago, CT scans were used to look at bony abnormalities, but weren't really that effective in evaluating the soft tissues. They were basically just fancy x-ray machines. But the soft tissue imaging capabilities of CT scans has improved dramatically over the past few decades. At some institutions where the radiologists and radiology technicians are used to running certain protocols to evaluate soft tissue injuries, they can do something called soft tissue windowing that modifies the CT protocol in a way that provides excellent detail of soft tissues like tendons, ligaments, and joint capsules. Because x-rays and CT scans all happen very quickly, a CT scan is a very short study. For that reason, you can often get one of these CT scans very quickly where it may take you longer to get scheduled for an MRI. So the bottom line is there used to be a huge difference between the two studies, and you may still read something that says MRI is for soft tissue and CT scan is for bone. But it's not that simple anymore. That line is really blurry in this age of modern medical imaging. Now you can get much of the same information on an MRI and a CT scan, but there are still differences. Here are the advantages of an MRI. Now, an MRI will give you more detail than a CT scan on soft tissue structures like tendons, ligaments, and joint capsules. An MRI only uses a magnet and does not use x-rays, so there's no radiation exposure with MRI. Here are the advantages of a CT scan. If you have a suspected fracture in the bone, the CT scan will give you more information, more detail, and more accuracy in the anatomic detail of the fracture than you will get on an MRI. Here are the disadvantages of an MRI. Now, MRI is a much longer study. It takes about half an hour or so to actually complete the exam. Now, you will have to lay still during the MRI study or the images will be terrible. It's often hard for athletes to sit still for that long. Now, another disadvantage is that you simply cannot turn on that gigantic magnet and get good images if you have implanted hardware like plates from a previous ankle fracture or screws from a tendon or a ligament repair because the metal creates this sort of starburst pattern on the image and it makes it really less valuable. The doctors call that scatter where we see this like bright white starburst thing on your image that just kind of ruins the image and you can't see anything at all with all that scatter. You also cannot have an MRI if you have vascular clips holding blood vessels together from some prior vascular surgery. Obviously, if you have little metal clips holding your blood vessels together, you don't want to turn on a magnet that's going to move those little metal clips and rip those blood vessels apart. You also can't have an MRI if you have a pacemaker because it could move the electrodes or kill the battery. You also cannot have an MRI if you're claustrophobic. You have to lay in a tube during the exam. Now, to combat this, there are other kinds of MRIs called an open MRI or an extremity MRI that do not require you to lay inside the tube, but nothing is free in medicine. You pay for not laying in that tube, and the way you pay for it is by getting much lower resolution images that don't give you anywhere near the same amount of anatomic detail. In short, those pictures from those open MRIs and extremity MRIs, they're much less effective and much less useful for you and your doctor. Here are the advantages of a CT scan. The CT scan provides excellent detail for suspected fractures and cystic lesions in bone. Now, a cystic lesion is basically just a benign bone tumor where you have a little collection of fluid or uh, some other kind of cells within the bone that makes it weaker. Sometimes runners have these cystic lesions, and because it's basically a hollow spot within the bone, the cystic lesion can give you symptoms that seem to be like a stress fracture. A CT scans provide excellent detail for all these kinds of abnormalities in bone. The CT scan is also very fast and it only takes a few minutes, so it's a lot easier for an athlete to sit still for a CT scan. A CT scan can give you some of the same information about soft tissue that MRI would give you, often at lower cost than MRI. In a sense, CT scans are older technology and the use of older technology is generally less expensive than new fancy cutting edge technology. Another advantage of the CT scan is that if you have a particular timeline because you're trying to stay on track with your training to stay on course for making it to the starting line of a specific race, you probably don't have a lot of time to waste. 
because a CT scan doesn't take as long as an MRI, imaging centers that have both a CT scan and an MRI can do a lot more CT scans in one day and a lot fewer MRIs. So it's usually a lot easier to schedule a CT quickly since the study itself takes so much less time to actually perform the study. Here are the disadvantages of a CT scan. The disadvantage most doctors talk about is that a CT scan doesn't show inflammation the way MRI does. Stress fracture, stress response, stress reaction, mild stress fractures, they just don't show up as well on a CT scan as they do on MRI. Now, in terms of your overall health, the bigger disadvantage is probably radiation. The CT scan uses x-rays, and so you do get exposed to radiation when you have a CT scan. Should I get an MRI or a CT scan for running injury? Well, if you don't really know if it's a bone issue, cartilage issue, or some other soft tissue issue like a tendon or ligament, and nothing shows up on x-rays, you may start thinking about getting an MRI or CT scan. So which one is really best? It all depends on your circumstances and your preferences. Whether or not an MRI or CT scan will be better for you depends on your story. When any doctor asks you all these questions about how you responded to treatment, it really helps us determine what kind of tissue has been injured. For example, if you have, a, a, let's say, just a really mild stress fracture or a stress response in one of your metatarsal bones, that typically calms down pretty quickly once you just reduce your activity. The amount of discomfort and pain you have when you apply impact, such as jumping rope or running or doing box jumps, that also helps us determine whether or not it's a bone or soft tissue injury. And even the positioning of your foot and the relief you get when you hold your foot in a different position when you stand or walk, that can also tell us a lot about whether or not an MRI or CT scan will be helpful to you. Whether or not an MRI or a CT scan will be better for you depends on your exam too. I mean, does it really seem more likely to be a tendon or a ligament? Does it hurt when you push it, stretch it, etc.? But if all things are equal and you could actually get the information you need with either of the two studies, then the choice of which one's best for you boils down to your personal preferences. If you're extremely claustrophobic and you won't be able to sit still inside a tube for half an hour, you're probably better off getting a CT scan instead of an MRI. But if you're extremely paranoid about radiation, if you worry about the amount of radiation you get on a transcontinental flight, if you would never in a million years um, live near a cell phone tower or high tension power lines, if you refuse to eat fish caught in the Pacific Ocean near Southeast Asia for fear of radiation still poisoning fish from the Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster, you probably don't want to get exposed to the radiation from a CT scan. In that case, you'd probably opt for an MRI. What you really need to understand is that there are differences between the exams and if you can keep really close track of your symptoms and the improvement or lack thereof from all of the treatments you've tried from that the time that the injury occurred until the time you meet with your doctor to consider an MRI or CT scan, you'll have a much better chance just getting the right study for you. Make sure you keep track of your pain, log it, record it, track it, share it with your doctor, and you and your doctor will then both be better equipped to decide whether or not an MRI or a CT scan will be most helpful in making the diagnosis that puts you on the path to healing and getting back to running. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.